Dasmariñas, officially the city of Dasmariñas, Tagalog, Lungsod ng Dasmariñas, or simply known as Dasmariñas City, is a first-class city in the province of Cavite, Philippines. According to the 2015 census, it has a population of 659,019 people, nicknamed Dasma. It has a land area of 90.1 square kilometers, 34.8 square miles, and is located 30 kilometers, 19 miles south of Manila. The growing congestion and outward urban expansion of the metropolitan Manila area has led to rapid development of the city. This inevitable growth is manifested by the influx of industries, the presence of large educational and health institutions, and the growing number of subdivisions elevating its economy. Etymology Dismariñas was named after Gómez Pérez Dismariñas, the seventh Spanish governor-general of the Philippines who served from 1590 to 1593. After his death, his son Luis Pérez de Smariñas became the governor-general from 1593 to 1596. Pérez de Smariñas came from San Miguel das Negradas, Vivero, Galicia, Spain. De Smariñas literally means, from as Mariñas, coastal region of Lugo combining the comarcas of A Mariña Occidental, A Mariña Central and A Mariña Oriental, coming itself from Mariño, of the coast, seaside or shore. In the Galician language, the native tongue from Bavero Galicia, Spain, and this from Mar. C. History Foundation In the 19th century during the Spanish colonial period, Dismariñas was originally called Tampas meaning, end of the forest. In the beginning stages, it was a part of its mother town of Imus, now city of Imus. It was once a part of a vast recollect hacienda that supported all the various missionary activities of the recollects in the Philippines and in Spain. On April 9, 1864, a council composed of the Archbishop of Manila, the politico military governor of Cavite, the prior provincial of the Augustinian recollect order, and the parish priest of Imus met to discuss the creation of the new town and parish separated from Imus. At that time, there were only 643 inhabitants in Tampas, the heart of the community. After thorough discussions, the Gobierno Civil Superior of the Islands approved the creation of the new town on May 12, 1864, with Don Juan Ramirez elected as Gobernador Silo Town Head. An ensemble of Nipa houses in the other barrios of the hacienda, like Malinta, Nancon, Salake, Palaparan, Malagasing, and Salatran, were grouped and migrated into a reducción reduction, in Tampas in 1866. Reducción originally meant the religious and civic aspects of missionary activities. Later it came to mean the process of resettling and unifying a community, thereby creating a newly organized town. For the Spanish missionaries and friars, this process was advantageous not only for evangelization but also for bringing people under the Spanish rule. A new town called Tampas was formed. From that time on, the people of Tampas built their houses within the hearing distance of the church bells. Bajo las toques de campana. The new town could be reached through a good network of roads and bridges built by the best architects and engineers of the Recollect Order. In the same year, the new town was rechristened Perez de Smariñas to honor the seventh Governor General of the Philippines, Don Gomez Perez de Smariñas (1590–1593). Governor de Smariñas, a Knight of Santiago, was a native of Galicia, Spain, and a former magistrate of Murcia and Cartagena, Spain, who brought a lot of economic improvements during the early days of colonization. Toward the end of 1866, the new town Perez de Smariñas had complied with the requirements of a typical Philippine town. A spacious town plaza at the center of the town with the church and the convent made of stone and bricks, a casa tribunal courthouse made of wood and nipa, a primary school for children and various houses made of nipa were built in designated areas. A cemetery was located around 200 yards away from the church and surrounded with wooden fence. The foundation of the town Perez de Smariñas was unique from most other towns of Cavite. For the first time, a town was created not by a preceding petition of the barrio people and its local officials as required by legal procedures and custom at that time. Instead, high-ranking church officials and the Cavite politico-military governor were the prime initiators of its foundation, for the sake of the people of the growing town and for their own interest, the Recollects sent a petition to Madrid for the creation of a new parish of Dismariñas, independent from Imus. 
Queen Isabella II signed the royal order creating the new parish of Perez de Smariñas on October 21, 1866. The following year, the construction of the stone parish church of Desmariñas dedicated to the Virgin Mary as Our Lady of Immaculate Conception was started. Barrios The old town of Perez de Smariñas was made up of several barrios. Salatran was considered the most important and famous during the Spanish regime because it was the site of the Recollect Casa Hacienda, a state house. Salatran came from the Tagalog word, Salat, meaning, people from another town. It was also once named as Bayanon because of the large concentration of people there. Since it was a part of the Recollect Hacienda de Imus, there were many people from different provinces who lived there working as farmhands. Leong Iloco, a place in Salatran, strengthens the belief that there were Ilocanos who settled there. Pasong Santal in Salatran got its name because of the abundance of santal trees. Tampas, the center of the newly formed town was located at the end of the deep forest in contrast with one of the sitios which was called Pintong Gubit, or Gate of the Forest. Sometimes, the name of a barrio is taken from its location, as in the case of Barrio Baral which suggests the high location of the barrio. Sabong on the other hand means crossroad or crossing. Barrio Salawag is believed to be the old Barrio Salake. The word Salawag refers to long bamboo poles to which Nipa roofing are tied up. Salawag is sometimes also called crossing because it serves as a crossroad between Palaparan and Salatran. Nankan, now called Lankan, was derived from the Tagalog word Lanka. Jackfruit. It is the biggest fruit tree in the Philippines which was reportedly brought from India to Malaysia and found its way to our country. The presence of lot of jackfruit trees may be the reason it was called Nankan. Malinta or Malintan, on the other hand was derived from the Tagalog word. Linta. Which means leech. The abundance of leeches in the place accounted for its name. On July 18, 1899, three more sitios of Perez de Smariñas were raised to the rank of barrios. Barrio Sampaloc owing to the abundance of tamarind trees in the place, Barrio Tamban was renamed San Jose and Barrio Luxujan became San Agustin. The 1896 Philippine Revolution by June 1896, the Spanish authorities in Cavite province had become suspicious of the local elite's activities. There were alleged top hierarchy meetings of the Recollects in the Casa Hacienda of Salatran and San Nicolas. Included in the meeting were General Bernardo Echeluche and other top military officials. The purpose of the meeting was to determine whether it was just to apprehend the notable elites who were Masons. At the time, Masons were bitter enemies of the church and their liberal ideas coming from their counterpart in Spain were beginning to awaken the natives to fight for their rights and even for their freedom. Fortunately for the elites, no decision was during the meeting. Thus, the local leaders freely but quietly continued their subversive activities. As soon as the revolution of 1896 broke out, leaders of Perez de Smariñas took no time in taking up arms against the Spanish rule. Don Placido Campos, the gobernadorcillo at the time and Don Francisco Barzaga, the municipal secretary, gathered the people to liberate their town from Spanish control at the beginning of September 1896. They captured the Casa Tribunal and Casa Hacienda in Salatran, killing the religious clergies who lived there. Eventually, the town was freed, as towns in Cavite fell into the hands of Filipino revolutionaries. The Spanish government in Madrid felt that Governor General Ramon Blanco S offensive against the natives was ineffective. Thus, a more aggressive person took over the command of the islands, Camilo de Palavieja, with Gen. José de la Chamber as the head of the campaign. Gradually, the Spaniards regained the control of the province. After the fall of Salang, the Spaniards turned their eyes to Pérez de Smariñas. Knowing the strength of resistance he might encounter, Gen. La Chamber decided to surround the whole town. He sent to advance units headed by Brigadier Gen. Jose Molina who went to take the left. The troop under call. Barutos who had taken Palaparan, went westward to cut the escape of the Filipinos to Imus and Carmona. Gen. La Chamber sent the main force toward the south. The Caviteños suffered terrible defeat because of lack of arms and ammunition. 
As the Spaniards approached the Poblacion, the revolutionaries retreated the stone building of the town. On February 25, 1897, the Spaniards decided to encircle the Poblacion rather go directly to the interior. They started burning all houses except the church. Seeing they were surrounded by fire, some of the rebels went out of hiding but were immediately met by open fire. Those who took refuge at the Casa Tribunal refused to come out and were all burned alive. Even those who took refuge in the church did eventually yield to the advancing Spanish forces. By March, Pérez de Smariñas had fallen back into the Spanish hand, then La Chamber returned to Salatrán. He was expecting a heavy resistance from the revolutionaries who occupied the Casa Hacienda but to his great surprise, they were able to take the place without any resistance. They hoisted the red and gold flag of Spain and converted it as their headquarters, however, news came that there was a heavy concentration of Filipino rebels at Pasong Santal a short distance beyond Salatran. The Battle of Pasong Santal was one of the most significant in the Caviteños' desire to keep their province under their control. It was the bloodiest battle fought in Cavite. It was during these series of battles in Cavite when Gen. Emilio Aguinaldo was elected in absentia as president of the newly formed revolutionary government. While some leaders of Magdalo faction of the Katipunan were busy fighting in Pasong Santal, members of the Magdawing and Magdalo faction were discussing the form of government and elected its officers in the Tejeros Convention in Rosario, Cavite. In said convention, Bonifacio was traitorously ousted from the Katipunan leadership by the combined Caviteño revolutionaries. Bonifacio and his brother Procopio were later executed by Aguinaldo's men. The Filipino casualties was enormous according to La Chamber. There were 150 men inside the tribunal or town hall when Spaniards set fire to the building and all 150 were killed. Others took refuge in the convent. This also was set on fire and the men were shot as they emerged. Others had shut themselves up in the church. With the church surrounded, the mountain artillery was brought up into position and from a distance of 35 meters, the strong doors of the church were bombarded and the troops went in through the breach. At the height of the Battle of Perez de Smarinas, Gen. Flaviano Yenko, Gen. Crispulo Aguinaldo, Lucas Camarino, Arturo Reyes and many more revolutionaries lost their lives fighting for their motherland. The American, Commonwealth, Colonial Era with the signing of the Treaty of Paris on December 10, 1898, ratified Washington on February 6, 1899, the Philippines was ceded to America by Spain. The American regime brought to Dismarinas, as it did to other parts of the country, several fundamental changes in the system of government, in language, and in educational system. In the month of February 1899, the Philippine American War began. General Henry Ware Lawton S brigade operated south of Manila including the province of Cavite in the middle of June 1899. The Americans could not land directly at Bacor because Zapote River was defended by the Filipino revolutionists who built trenches as tactical defenses forming three sides of an angle which made the Filipinos hardly visible. The American S 14th Infantry Battalion swam across the during the Battle of Zapote River and under the cover of military artillery, charged against the Filipinos who then retreated to the woods. Moving southward, the Americans encountered more Filipino revolutionists in the town of Bacor, Imus and Perez de Smariñas, a battalion of infantry narrowly escaped annihilation. News had been brought to the American camp that the Filipino soldiers had evacuated the town and that the native mayor was disposed to surrender it formally to the Americans. The battalion thus went there to take possession, but before reaching the place, the Filipino revolutionists closed in on all sides, and a heavy firefight went on for hours. The Americans were saved from destruction by a desperate bayonet charge when they were rescued by General Wheaton's brigade, Placido Campos, who sided with General Emilio Aguinaldo since the beginning of the Filipino-American War in 1899, was captured together with his nephew Guillermo Campos. They were imprisoned at the Provost Political Prison on Postiga Street, Intramuros, Manila, where they were kept for six months. The Americans established the military government in 1900. 
By order of the Colonel of the American Battalion stationed in Perez de Smarinas, the residents of the town nominated a president and a vice president. Elected through the raising of hands were Francisco Barzaga as president and Conrado Malihan as vice president. They served their office until the civil government was established by the Americans in 1901, on January 31, 1901, in accordance with President McKinley. S. Instructions that the Filipinos be allowed to manage their own municipal governments. The Second Philippine Commission enacted the Act No. 82, the new municipal code, placing each municipal government under the following officials the municipal president, the vice president, and the municipal council, who were elected by qualified voters every two years. In line with this, Placido Campos was again elected as the head of the municipality of Perez de Smarinas in October 1901. Francisco Barzaga then became the treasurer of Desmarinas. The two were re-elected in 1903. In 1903, the American government made the first census in the Philippines. Francisco Barzaga and the secretary, Esteban Quique, made census enumerators for Perez Desmarinas under the leadership of Placido Campos. When the census was finished, the total population of the town was only 3,500. Before the revolution of 1898, the population was 12,000, there were 20 cabezas de barangay, barangay head, and each of which had 200 persons with ages ranging from 18 to 59 years, men and women, the number of children estimated at 6,000 giving a total of 12,000, comparing the population prior to the revolution with that of 1948, there has been a decrease in the population of Perez de Smarinas. The 1948 census accounted to only 9,700 while that of the pre-revolutionary period totaled 12,000. From 1905 to 1916, the law which was passed in 1901 took effect. It combined the municipalities of Imus, Perez de Smarinas and Bacor into one, with the seat of government located at Imus. Consequently, on January 5, 1905, Perez de Smarinas became a part of Imus. The reason for this was to punish the insurrectos for not surrendering. Besides, the inability of the people to work outside from fear of being suspected by the constabulary greatly decreased the income of the municipalities to the detriment of the employees and the policemen. In 1917, under Governor General Francis Burton Harrison, 1913 to 1921, Perez de Smarinas was again declared a separate municipality. The provincial governor of Cavite, Antero S. Soriano, convened the local leaders, including Placido Campos, Francisco Barzaga, and Felipe Tirona. Together, they agreed to delete the word Perez and retain Desmarinas as the new name of the town. For the second time, Placido Campos headed the rechristened town of Desmarinas. World War II Japanese Reign of Terror and the Desmarinio Resistance Guerrilla Movement 1941–1945 The town of Desmarinas is a town in the province of Cavite that shed blood and has given up many lives for the sake of our country. There were many times when the Japanese conducted zonifications in the town. The barrios of Palaparan and Salawag suffered the most number of deaths. Being remote places and thinking that guerrillas were hiding there, these two barrios were zonified two times giving up several lives. The Japanese Imperial Army made the schools as their garrison. Meanwhile, after surviving the Bataan Death March, General Mariano Castaneda returned to Cavite and helped organize the resistance movement in Desmarinas headed by Col. The Stanislao Mangubat Karunking of the 4th Infantry Regiment Filipino-American Cavite Guerrilla Force, with Major Dominator Alano Mangubat M.D. Head of the Medical Corps, Capt. Elpidio Mangubat Barzaga Sr., Major Maximo de la Torre, Major Joaquin Crane, Major Rosendo Navarro, Captain Serapio Guevara, Captain Jose Bautista, Lieutenant Colonel Jose Medina Carunking, First Lieutenant Pantaleon Cantambuan, First Lieutenant Quirino Clorina, Captain Remigio Carunking, Capt. Gaudencio Guetta, Captain Felicissimo Carunking 1500th Dental Corps and Incumbent Municipal Mayor, Captain Clemente Bautista, Captain Antonio Montoya, Captain Felipe Alano, Captain Arsenio Sico, Captain Emmanuel Dominguez, 1st Lieutenant Tibercio Mendoza, Captain Arturo Sayoto Carunking, 2nd Lieutenant Leonardo Campos, 2nd Lieutenant Hermogenes Beltran, 2nd Lieutenant Teodoro Sapita, 2nd Lieutenant Pacifico Menez, SSGT. 
Malesio Veluz, S., Sergeant Ruperto Mangubat, Captain Purificacion Medina, 2nd Lieutenant. Filomino Mantle This unit provided guerrilla warfare and prepared to attack with every armed men when the Allied landed on the Batangas beaches, sabotage missions, cutting off enemy communications and logistics, reconnaissance missions, protecting civilian people against aggression by the Imperial Japanese Army and provide evacuation plans for them and intensified intelligence reports to the 11th Airborne Division, 187th Glider Infantry Regiment headed by Colonel Harry B. Hildebrand to give way for the Liberation Forces. Source equals collections.pvao.mil.ph 4th Infantry Regiment Colonel Estanislao Mangubat Karunking, General Mariano Castaneda On December 17, 1944, another zonification was conducted in the town proper. The church was used as garrison and all suspected male residents involved are coordinating with the guerrilla movement of call. E. M. Karunking, 15 guerrilla officers of the 4th Infantry Cobra Unit were brought at the back of the Dismarinas Elementary School and were tortured and bayoneted to death. Some were hanged at the old mango tree near the school canteen, whipped, tortured, and forced to say something about the local Dismarinio guerrilla resistance movement. Women are abducted and raped by the Japanese soldiers, and children were bayoneted to their deaths. There were those who experienced the so called Tinatubig. Wherein the head is immersed in a drum of water. Aside from these, raid after raid were made and male residents were shot to death. Some were killed because they were mistaken as guerrilla members. Some fought face to face. During encounters in Baral, Malinta, Palaparan, and Lankan, others were killed in other towns. Some came as far as Cavite City to escape Japanese air bombings at the naval base. Most male residents of Dismarineños were among those who fought with the Japanese in Bataan and Corregidor Island. Sad to state too, there were those who joined the Bataan Death March, some of whom are already dead and some are still living to tell the tale. In January 31, 1945 during the main Allied landing on the Nasigbu Batangas beaches, the Dismarinio guerrilla force of the 4th Infantry Regiment under Col E.M. Karunking plus one battalion under Major Santiago 1st Infantry protected at all cost the National Highway and attacked enemy positions at the National Highway from Pala Pala Road inclusive extending 3,000 yards east and west of the National Highway to Salatran Road to prevent the enemy to rally and counterattack and to clear the path of the main Allied force the 11th Airborne Division under call. Harry B. Hildebrand after General Mariano Castaneda gave the command to Colonel Estanislao Mangubat Karunking, 4th Infantry Cobra Unit, and Colonel Emiliano de la Cruz, 14th Infantry, to liberate Dismarinas. A loud rallying war cry rang from the Dismarinio 4th Infantry Guerrilla Group. Countrymen, arise, the zero hour has come, the mighty forces of liberation have returned, the stars and stripes, real symbols of justice and freedom once more adorn our blue skies, keep them flying, our friendly comrades in arms, the brave Americans under their great General MacArthur Savior of the Philippines, did not fail us. They are here. Let us fight side by side with them, with General Castaneda the unconquerable fighting governor of Cavite, and our indestructible union of forces steeled with the flames of valor. Let us crush and exterminate the heartless conquerors of race, assassins of democracy, enemies of mankind, only final and complete victory, can restore to us. Our real republic and independence. Our peace, freedom and honor our homes and godly existence. Valiant, guerrilleros, to arms, to the field of battle. In January 31, 1945, the 11th Airborne Division, 187th Glider Infantry Regiment under Colonel Harry B. Hildebrand and American and Filipino troops of the 4th and 42nd Infantry Divisions of the Philippine Commonwealth Army and the Dismarinio Unit of the 4th Infantry Regiment Phil American Cavite Guerrilla Forces headed by Colonel Estanislao M. Karunking combined with Colonel Salog 1st Infantry and Colonel Reyes killed 56 Japan's soldiers garrison in Dismarinas and more in the town of Imus, the town of Dismarinas liberated after a fierce and bloody battle in Dismarinas against an enemy who would never surrender the fanatical Imperial Japanese Army, and thus marking the end of the Japanese reign of terror in Dismarinas Cavite. Dismarinas has a long list of heroes who sacrificed their lives for their motherland, an updated list is required. Post-war era and before cityhood
After the war, the Philippines became independent and Dasmariñas started to develop. The population increased because of the mass exodus of families from Metro Manila and nearby provinces. The Dasmariñas Bagong Bayan (DBB), also known as Dasmariñas Resettlement Area, was established in 1975 by letter of instruction number no. 19 issued by the then President Ferdinand Marcos. From 1983 to 1998, the Smariñas had an economic boom. Different factories and establishments sprouted in the town which gave way for the growth in population. From a sixth-class municipality, the town became a first-class municipality. As of 2015, the city has a population in excess of over 650,000. Dismariñas served as a catalyst for major economic development and sustained growth for the Metro Manila urban area since the 1990s. The influx of industries, academia, and real estate developments is significant of in a town outside of a major financial district. Located at Dismariñas are the first Cavite industrial estate with 81 foreign and domestic corporations employing 20,000. The city also hosts one of the largest universities in Cavite, the De La Salle University Dismariñas campus, which serves more than 25,000 students. Cityhood attempts and present there have been several attempts to convert Dismariñas into a city. The first attempt was in 1997, when HB 08931 was filed by Congressman Renato P. Dragon with other cityhood bills of IMAS HB 08960 and Bacor HB 08959. It was filed last February 11, 1997 and read last February 13, 1997. Committee Report N0-01361 was submitted on December 17, 1997. It was approved on the third reading by the House last January 10, 1998. It did not push through as a Republic Act and no plebiscite happened. The second attempt was in 2000, when HB 099883 was filed by Congressman Araneo Maliksi last March 13, 2000. It was first read last March 13, 2000. It was approved on the second and third reading of House last March 15, 2000 and March 27, 2000. It was transmitted to the Senate on March 28, 2000 and received on March 31, 2009. It did not push through as a Republic Act and no plebiscite happened. The idea of converting Dismariñas into a component city was again proposed for the third time after failure in 1997 and 2000. House Bill No. 5258 converting the municipality of Dasmariñas into a component city was filed by Congressman Elpidio F. Barzaga Jr. last October 3, 2008. It was read last October 6, 2008. It was approved by the House on second and third reading on October 7 and November 17, 2008. It was transmitted and received by the Senate last November 17 and 20, 2008. It was passed by the Senate on second and third reading last October 28 and November 5, 2009. It is received by the President of the Philippines last October 14, 2009 and signed as Republic Act 9723 last October 15, 2009, Comelec Resolution No. 8682 in connection with the November 25, 2009 plebiscite to ratify the conversion of the municipality of Dasmariñas Province of Cavite into a component city pursuant to Republic Act 9723 dated October 15, 2009, Republic Act No. 9723 was ratified by the registered voters of Dasmariñas through a plebiscite conducted last November 25, 2009, converted the municipality of Dasmariñas in the province of Cavite into a component city to be known as the city of Dasmariñas. There were about 44,000 voters who cast the plebiscite ballot in the town's 1,508 polling precincts. The yes votes won overwhelmingly. The yes votes got 36,559 while the no votes got 8,141. Then Mayor Jennifer Austria Barzaga, elected in 2007, is both the first woman mayor and first city mayor of Dasmariñas since its incorporation as a city. Since 1892, when Don Placido N. Campos became the first mayor, there have been 23 mayors of the city. On 2011, the Paro Paro Festival was first celebrated. 
It is celebrated every November 26 to commemorate the incorporation of the city of Dasmariñas with people dancing and parading in the streets in butterfly costumes. In November 2013, the Paro Paro Festival was cancelled, instead, the allocated funds will be donated to the Typhoon Yolanda victims. Geography Dasmariñas City is about 8,234 hectares, 12 kilometers south of Metro Manila or the National Capital Region and 27 kilometers south of the center of the city of Manila. It is bounded by the city of Imus and the municipality of Salang, both in Cavite at the north and south respectively, at the east by the cities of San Pedro and Binyan by the side of Laguna and Carmona and at the west, it is bounded by General Trias, also in Cavite and a little further from this boundary is Trece Martires City and also borders with Muntinlupa, it is strategically located at the intermediate zone of the metropolitan Manila area. With adequate accessibility, Dismariñas is within the urbanizing development influence of Metro Manila area. It is composed of the Poblacion and the Barangays. The Poblacion which is now divided into four zones is on the westernmost section of the city. Sabong, Salawag and Salatran are to the north and to the south are San Agustin, Lancon and Sampaloc. Baral, Palaparan, and Bagong Bayan are on the eastern side of the city. The city of Dasmariñas is landlocked. However, it is not too far from the coastal towns of Rosario, Kawit, Bacor City, Navaleta and Cavite City whose average distance from Poblacion is less than 30 kilometers. It is about the same distance from Laguna de Bay and about 27 kilometers from the resort city of Tagaytay and the famous Tall Lake. At present, Dasmariñas is served by corridors traversing the central areas which provide linkages to the Metropolitan Manila Area Core in the north and the developing nodes of Laguna and Batangas. Topography Dasmariñas is partly lowland and partly hill. The Poblacion itself is elevated. From an elevation of 80 meters at the Poblacion, the land rises to 250 meters towards Salang. Generally, land near rivers and creeks are rugged. Dismariñas is outside the typhoon belt and has no fault line constraints. Further, it is served by natural drainage system since it is traversed by several rivers and water tributaries draining to the Manila Bay. The city has yet to experience floods, strongly sloping to elevated areas cover approximately 1,532.16 hectares or 18.61% of the total area. These are dispersed among Baral, Lancon, Palaparan, Salawag, Sampaloc and San Agustin. Areas with slopes 10.1 to 18% cover about 575. 72 hectares of land in portions of Salawag, Salatran, Baral, and other parts. On the other hand, gently sloping or undulating areas comprise merely 710.4 hectares or 8.62% of the total land area while undulating areas with a slope of 2.6 to 5% account for the biggest percentage of 50.59% of the total land area equivalent to 4, 165.64 hectares of land which are dispersed over the municipality except Sabong and San Jose. Climate Dismariñas has a tropical wet and dry climate, Köppen climate classification, ah, with two pronounced seasons, wet season and dry season. Wet season covers the period from May to December of each year and dry season covers the period from January to April. Demographics in the 2015 census, the population of Dismariñas, was 659,019 people, with a density of 7,300 inhabitants per square kilometer or 19,000 inhabitants per square mile. From the original 643 inhabitants of the old Perez Dismariñas, the population grew and so did the town. By 1888, there were already more than 4,576 people living in Perez Dismariñas. Gradually, the economic life of the people improved. The inquilinos lessees of the hacienda rose to become the middle class. Dismariñas, 8,664 hectares were all farmed in 1890 except for 3,770 hectares, including parcels at Gatdula and Balaming. Lessees paid the usual land rent base on the measurement of lowland and upland riceland set up by the Old Dog, Friar Administrator, of Casa Hacienda de Salatran. 
In the 1880s, there were 200 quinones of dry and 50 quinones of wet ricelands yielding some 2,300 cavanas of pele, 5,000 picules of mucovado sugar, 50 cavans of corn and camote, 60 picules of dao and 25 picules of peanuts. Desmarinas was a highly advanced town where not only textiles from Batangas and Bulacan looms, but also imported European cloth from Manila reached the town elites. Fish and other staple food however still came from nearby towns. Surprisingly until 1880, there was no public market in the town. There was a principal public dirt road in Perez de Smarinas that went to Salang which was passable to all kinds of vehicle only during dry season, but reachable only by foot and horseback during wet season. By 1870, mails from Manila were received at a central station in Cavite Puerto where it was sorted. Mails were brought via Cahuit, then Imus then Dismarinas. Culturally, Perez Dismarinas was not too behind for by 1874 there were already two competing brass bands in the town. Don Valeriano Campos, an inquilino and a former gobernator solo of the town 1879-1881, organized one of the brass bands. He was popularly known as Capitang Bale. He was the highest taxpayer and owned a house made of cogon and wood on Calle Real with an appraised value of P300. His son Placido Campos learned his trade and also considered a man of means. Manuela Monzon, another well-to-do woman owned a house at the town. South Main Street. The house made of nipa and wood was valued at P200 and was rented as a boy's. School for P72. Nonetheless in 1892, there was a noticeable decrease of the male population. As conflict between the Friar Osanderos, the Inquilinos and Casimas multiplied more people went into hiding in the deep forest of Perez de Smarinas. The rise of Talisanismo in Cavite was often connected with agrarian problems in the hacienda town owned by the friars. The city has 75 barangays, has more than 170 subdivisions and the biggest resettlement area in the Philippines. The Dismarinas Bagong Bayan DBB, most affluent families from Metro Manila and nearby towns and provinces have chosen Dismarinas to be their home due to its proximity to the national capital region. The mass exodus of people here in Dismarinas is also brought about by the industrial boom which brought about more jobs. There are also a big number of foreign residents such as Koreans, Chinese, Japanese, Americans, Hindus, Britons and Eurasians. Because of this, Dismarinas can be also considered as the melting pot of Cavite. Religion Christianity is the predominant faith, composed of Roman Catholics, Protestants, and other independent Christian groups. Majority of the population are Roman Catholics. The city is the seat of the Vicariates of Immaculate Conception and our Mother of Perpetual Help under the jurisdiction of Diocese of Imus. Other prominent religious groups include Church of God World Missions, Philippines and the local Church of God Dismarinas, serve as the national office of the Church of God based in Cleveland, Tennessee. Jesus Miracle Crusade International Ministry, DASMA Outstation, Iglesia Ni Cristo, United Church of Christ in the Philippines, UCCP, Day by Day Christian Ministries, Jesus is Lord Church, Jill, Evangelica United de Cristo, Victory Christian Fellowship, United Pentecostal Church, Phils, Inc., World Mission Church, The United Methodist Church, Salatran Covenant Bible Church, Presbyterian Churches, Baptist and Bible Fundamental Churches, Seventh Day Adventist Churches, Members Church of God God International known as Ang Dating Don, the Lord's Hand Family Apostolic Church, and the Pentecostals of Dismarinas, TPOD, an independent oneness Pentecostal, old-fashioned holiness group which originated in Dismarinas City itself. A considerable percentage of the population are also composed of Muslims. Religious tolerance exists among members of different sects. Languages the city has a majority of English and Tagalog speakers. Almost all households in the city are bilingual and know how to speak English. Due to its proximity to Metro Manila and being part of the Greater Manila area, there is also a considerably minor amount of speakers of Bicolano, Ilocano, Alongo, Cebuano, Pangasinan, Capampangan and Chavacano. Cityscape the city of Dismarinas is divided into 11 unofficially defined administrative districts and is subdivided into 75 barangays. 
Poblacion The Poblacion is the city center which is home to Dismarinas. Old Residence, the newly renovated Old Church of the Parish of Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception, Dismarinas Library, Dismarinas Elementary School and the Immaculate Conception Academy Science High School are located in the town's plaza. Municipal Government's Municipio or the Town Hall is located a few meters away from the plaza. Near the Poblacion is the De La Salle University Health Sciences Campus and the DLSU Medical Center, the first ISO-certified hospital in the Philippines. Divided into four zones, the town's center is mostly residential area but is still lined with many business establishments. Celebrations, shows and gatherings are being held at the plaza. Every December 8, the town's Poblacion celebrates the Feast of the Immaculate Conception wherein colorful banderitas, loud marching bands and a spectacular display of fireworks are seen and is being visited by many people coming from the different towns in Cavite. Cultural shows and many celebrations are happening here almost weekly so it has the rightful claim to be called the liveliest city in Cavite. Five barangays are located in this district. Zone I Zone IA A stands for Aguinaldo because of its location along Aguinaldo Highway. Zone 2 Zone 3 Zone IV San Agustin Casuyan is its first name of this place, during the Spanish period, because of the presence of many cashew trees on the area. After many years, its name became Luxuhan and on July 18, 1889, it was renamed again by the petition passed by Don Juan Bautista requesting the place be named after San Agustin. The place is lying between the Poblacion and Sampaloc in the north. Farming was the chief source of income of the people here. San Agustin is blessed with rich soil that can be planted with rice, sugarcane, fruits and vegetables. Here, vast lands with big mango trees can be found. There was a continuous flow of water coming from Bucal to the Poblacion during the Spanish period which they call Simbro. However, due to the town's development, most lands are now being converted into subdivisions and other business establishments. On December 17, 1944, three persons living here were killed at the Sonap Zonification in the Poblacion. They were Conrado Aledia, Primitivo Sango and Matiaga Ramirez. Today, the place is on development. The Dismarinas Central Market and the business establishments such as the Walter Mart and FSC are located here. Three barangays are located in this district. San Agustin I San Agustin II San Agustin III San Jose This barangay is situated between the Poblacion and Sabong. On April 13, 1889, a petition was passed appealing the sitio, once known Sitio Tamban, to be transformed into a barangay. The place was renamed on July 18, 1889, and was given the name San Jose in commemoration of their patron saint, Saint Joseph. Cumpuerta is the name of the hideout of the Filipino revolucionarios during the revolution against Spain. This is a deep canal of flowing water which still exists until now. The families of Cantada, Belena, Reyes, Mendoza, Caminig, Ramos, and Pastor are the first ones who settled here. Only one barangay is located in this district, its namesake, Barangay San Jose. Salatran This place is known for the name Salatran, even during the Spanish period. There are no exact historical accounts for the origin of the name. Some says that such name was given because the early settlers of this place were from Pampanga, Visayas, Tagalog region and some Chinese that served the Spanish friars. However, according to the original settlers here, the place was originally called Bayanon. They said that this has numerous big Spanish houses which is like in a small town. An old house in the eastern part of Salatran was used by the Spanish friars as the storage place for the rice and was called Machina. It was also used as a headquarters by the Guardia Civil. When the revolution ignited, the Machina became the center of attack by the revolucionarios from the Poblacion and this barrio. The friars weren't aware of the said assault. 
On March 7, 1897, the Spanish went to Salatran where the Magdalo soldiers led by General Emilio Aguinaldo hid. General Emilio Aguinaldo received help from 1,000 men and formed a greater force and even the Spanish troops led by General La Chamber Didn. T. Penetrate Salatran. Because of the revelry, the Spanish burned all the houses and establishments in the barrio. There were only left three houses unburned. During the World War II, Simplicio Lara and Teodorico Timbang were killed by the Japanese soldiers. Now, Salatran is on vast development due to the presence of numerous subdivisions and villages. Schools located here are the St. Jude College, the Immaculate Conception Academy North Campus, and many others. There are also many business establishments here, four barangays are located in this district. Salatran I Salatran II Salatran III Salatran IV Salatran B proposed. Sabong. On the northern part of Dasmariñas is where this barangay can be found. The word Sabong means to overflow, wherein the creeks running from Malagasing, Imus tend to overflow in this place. This were made by the Spanish friars to irrigate the vast rice fields in the barangay. The diversion in the direction of the waterflow made a big change in the agriculture during the Spanish period. There were rich production of rice and because of this, a bodega was made here for the storage of rice and was called Kamalig ng Pear, Silo of the Priest. This place is considered to be the richest land in Dismarinas during the Spanish period. Residents here were known to be industrious. Agriculture is still a source of income in this barangay though it diminished due to the development of the lands into subdivisions and schools. More than 85% of the population are professionals and have a high standard of living. In this place, the Madonna Charity Clinic is located which is owned by Mrs. Bracia Tenko. This clinic is a big help to the less fortunate residents of the barangay which seeks medical help. At the back of the Madonna Clinic was a rock with a spring of water, who call ain't too big, at the Lang Lang River it was believed to have healing properties or miracles. In 2007 the Land Transportation Office Dismarinas City or LTO Dismarinas City District Office was established with the sponsorship and pioneering efforts of Mrs. Carmelita Carunking Canet to better serve the ever-growing population of Dismarinas City. This barangay is also the birthplace of a Cavatino Robin Hood folk hero Leonardo Manicio a.k.a. Nardong Putik. Only one barangay is located in this district, its namesake, Barangay Sabong. Baral On the eastern part of Dasmariñas, we can find Barangay Baral which is 3 kilometers away from the city center. The complete name of Barrio Baral is Pansal Baral. Pansal is a Tagalog word meaning aqueduct, while Baral, also a native word, means mound. Even though there are no historical records about its establishment, it is safe to say that it was formed during the Spanish period due to the presence of ruins of old Spanish houses and sugar mills. The families of Quilao and Beltran are the first ones to settle in this place. This barangay became the hide out of the Katipuneros, Revolucionarios. During the Japanese occupation, there are some Dismarineños who were killed in this place. They were Alfredo Purificacion, Pedro Calipad, José Iñota, Victor de Jesus and Angel Oles. The Japanese soldiers also planted several cotton trees on the area. Now, this place is considered one of the richest barangay in Dismarineños. Many schools and colleges can be found here such as the Southern Luzon College, International English Center, Asian Trinity School, and many others. Adjacent to the place is the Emilio Aguinaldo College. Numerous subdivisions and villages are also located here. Four barangays are located in this district. These are Baral I, Baral II, Baral III, Baral Main, Langcon. This place is located on the southwestern part of Dasmariñas. The name, Langkon, came from the word, Lanka, meaning jackfruit, which is believed to be planted in many parts of this barangay during the 1900, the year of its foundation. 
Barangay Langcon was a part of a vast hacienda during the Spanish period that's why there are numerous water systems for rice fields that can be found here. The San Agustin Dam was constructed in 1855. On the last part of the 19th century, the Spaniards erected an indigo plantation here. The stone-made grinder of indigo still exists until now and it is the mark of the Spanish influence in the place. The Spaniards are the first ones who planted sugar canes and became the primary source of income during the 18th century. During those times, terapiche and carabaos are used to make panucha and paldo. Don Placido Campos and Andres Medina are the ones who owned these terapiche. When the Americans arrived, this place attracted residents from the Poblacion. The families Quilao, Bautista, Saravusev, Reyes, Remela, Sango, Lodato, Empeño, Sitsatan, Medina, De Lima and others transferred here during those times. During the Second World War, the Japanese had a big plantation of cotton trees in Lancon. Desmarineños were forced to work here. A Japanese concentration camp was also established in this area. Now, this is considered to be a backbone of the economic progress of Desmarineños. The presence of numerous factories in different industrial estates in this area, such as the first Cavite industrial estate, serves as the working place for the workers living in Dismarinas and other towns of Cavite as well. Two barangays are located in this district. These are Lancon I, Lancon II, Palaparan. Palaparan is situated at the southeastern part of Dismarinas. In the easternmost part, is surrounded by the municipalities of Gen. Mariano Alvarez, Cavite and San Pedro, Laguna. This place was a grassy land with no trees growing on its wide space providing an excellent place for flying kites during summer. In fact, this was what used to be, a palaparan, meaning an airfield for flying kites. During the Spanish period, the Spaniards used to go to this place during weekends to fly kites of different designs and colors. The first settlers here came from the town of Imus. Among them are the families of Faustino Alvarez, Flaviano Packingan, Gregorio de la Cruz, Pablo Papa, Dominguez and the Martinez. In 1911, most of the residents here are said to be uneducated because there were only eight persons who can vote. Also during the Spanish period, this place became a hiding place for the Katipuneros, Revolucionarios. During the Japanese occupation, some hideouts of the guerrillas were found here such as a PQOG, RCTC, Hunters, Reyes Regiment and Salog Regiment. In June 1943, the Japanese ordered the residents to assemble in front of the school wherein they were not given food and water from morning until evening. Suspected guerrilla members were killed. This barangay is subdivided into six sitios which are Nugan on the west, Crossing, Palaparan on the north, Palaparan Alea also on the north, Puk and Baral on the northeast. Today, it is considered to be one of the richest barangay in Dismarinas because of the many factories and industrial estates that are located here. Among them are the Monterey, Reynolds Corporation, Molavi Industrial Estate and many others. Three barangays are located in this district. These are Palaparan I Palaparan II Palaparan III Salawag Barangay Salawag is the largest barangay of the city in terms of land area and population. It is located in the northeastern part of Dismarinas. Such name was given to this place due to the presence of bamboo trees Salawag in archaic Tagalog made for the construction of houses. This barangay had many names during the olden times. The Spanish called this Pasong Tinta because there were many plants called Tinta Tintahan used as an ink. This was also called Horing Bado because the early settlers believed that there is a treasure here buried under a large rock. During the arrival of the Americans, the place was called Mataz na Sampalok because there were numerous tall Sampalok tamarind, trees planted here. The first families to live here are the Macalanao, Pacifico, Purificacion and Paris, while the richest families living here are the Accusar, Panario and Muncata families. Only one barangay is located in this district, its namesake, Barangay Salawag. 
Today, the barangay boasts of the world-class Orchard Golf and Country Club, the site of the 1995 Johnny Walker Golf Tournament and a state university, the Technological University of the Philippines, Cavite Campus, established in 1979. Many subdivisions and villages are also located here, such as Golden City, San Marino City, Avita Sta. Catalina Village, Avita Sta Cecilia and Avita Residences Dis Marinas. Commercial establishments include the District Dis Marinas, SM Savemore Salawag and SM Savemore San Marino. Salawag is also unique among the barangays in the city as it has two Catholic churches serving its huge population. First established was Mary Immaculate Parish in Nia Road, built in 2003 under the pastoral care of the Sons of the Holy Mary Immaculate, which is also the home of Salawag's patroness, Maria Immaculata, La Virgin de Salawag, whose image is reported to be miraculous. Second was Pope John XXIII Parish in San Marino City, established in 2016. Two townships led by two of the country's largest real estate companies, Ayala Land. S. Vermosa and Vista Lands Vista City, both include areas under the jurisdiction of Barangay Salawag. Sampaloc There were numerous Sampaloc, English, Tamarind, trees in this place that's why it was given such name. It has the largest land area in Dismarinas. The central business district of the city is located in this barangay. Sitios formed here in 1896 were Pala Pala, Bukal, Malinta, Manalo, Pila and Talasayan. In this barangay, the Philippine Christian University and the Union Theological Seminary can be found. Hela Phils, is located in Malinta, Yurong Laboratories and New Era Village of Iglesia Ni Cristo, Church of Christ, are in Bukal. More than half of the land is owned by the International Institute of Rural Reconstruction. Five barangays are located in this district, these are Sampaloc I Sampaloc II Sampaloc III Sampaloc IV Sampaloc V Dismarinas Bagong Bayan Dismarinas Bagong Bayan DBB, was established in 1975 under the government of Prez. Ferdinand Marcos. At first, it occupies 234 hectares of land in the town and is 8 kilometers away from the town's Poblacion. This land was bought by the PHHC or the People Homesite Housing Corporation to the owners at 2,400,000 pesos p2,400,000, which then became the resettlement area for the less privileged families living in the depressed areas of Metro Manila. The families of Eduardo Coronel, Rogelio Tomas, Ruben Alvarez, Manuel Ribang, Aurora de la Cruz and Diosdado Alto were the first ones to live here. Diosdado Alto, Rodolfo Urubia, Danilo Serrano, Maximo Esteban, Manuel Macuto and Francisco Gonzalez became the first barangay's leaders. After a few years, DBB was divided into 30 barangays with a population of 100,000 living in more than 600 hectares of land. Each families were given 90 to 200 square meters which they loaned from the NHA or the National Housing Authority. On September 12, 1990, the Sangguniang Bayan Municipal Council passed Order 108-90 ordering DBB to be divided into 47 barangays which then was approved by the authority. Today, the Congressional South Avenue is lined with numerous schools and business establishments. The Katawa market offers goods at cheaper price which then serve as an alternative market for the town. Schools such as the Dismarinas Elementary School and Dismarinas National High School are just nearby the market. Along the said avenue sits the De La Salle University Dismarinas campus. This district has the most number of barangays, 42. Local government Dismarinas City has been a municipality and later a component city with a mayor-council form of government since its establishment in 1866. The mayor is the chief executive of the city. He is elected to serve a three-year term, with a maximum of three terms. The incumbent city mayor is Elpidio F. Barzaga Jr., who succeeded his wife, now Congresswoman, Jennifer Austria Barzaga. 
Prior to his term as mayor which was started in June 30, 2016, he served as the representative of 2nd District of Cavite from 2007 to 2013, and the first representative of the newly formed 4th District of Cavite from 2013 to 2016. The vice mayor is the presiding officer of the Sangguniang Panglungsod ng Dasmarinas English, City Council of Dasmarinas. He is also the chief executive of the city whenever the mayor is out of the city. He is elected to serve a three-year term, with a maximum of three terms. The incumbent vice mayor is Rex Mangubat, incumbent since 2016. The Sangguniang Panglungsod ng Dismarinas English, City Council of Dismarinas, is composed of 12 members with two ex officio members which are the Association of Liga ng Mga Barangay ng Dismarinas English, League of Barangays of Dismarinas President and the Sangguniang Kabatan English, Youth Council Federation President. There are 20 committees in the city each headed by a chairman who is a city councilor. They are elected to serve a three-year term, with a maximum of three terms, the city officials from June 30, 2016 to June 30, 2019. They were elected last May 9, 2016 during the 2016 Philippine national and local elections, which since 2007, all candidates from the Barzagas group sweep the municipal, city council. Heads Except for lack of dates of the terms of the gobernadorcillos, also popularly referred to as captain, during the Spanish regime, the list of town heads of Dasmariñas is complete from its founding to the present. Gobernadorcillos, 1868-1895 Juan Ramirez Adriano Lano Eduardo Bautista Anastasia Palm Valeriano Campos Eugenio Ambalada Ligario Malihan Leon Mangubat Lino Alcantara Fausto Bautista Gregorio Boschista Capitan Municipal, 1895 to 1896 Placido Campos, 1895 to 1896 Municipal Presidents, 1900 to 1935 Francisco Barzaga, 1900 Placido Campos, 1901 Municipal Presidents under IMAS Government, 1905-1916 Effectivity of the law passed in 1901 combining the municipalities of IMAS, Dasmariñas and Bacor with its seat of government in IMAS. César A. Fontanilla, 1905-1913 Felipe Tapasio, 1912-1915 Cecilio Camantig, 1915-1916 Municipal Presidents, 1917-1935 Placido Campos, 1917-1918 Felipe Tirona, 1919-1921 Francisco Barzaga, 1922-1924 Isidro Mangubat, 1925 to 1927. Emilio Aledia Ramirez, 1928 to 1931. Call. Estanislao Mangubat Karunking, 1931 to 1934. Doroteo Mangubat, 1934 to 1937. Municipal mayors, 1935 to 2009. Teodorico Sarasario, 1937-1940 Felicissimo Medina Carunking, 1941-1945 Maximo de la Torre, 1946, appointed Gaudencio Guetta, 1946, appointed Fermín de la Cruz, 1947, appointed Arturo Carunking, 1948-1950 Emiliano de la Cruz, 1951-1955 Tomás Hembrador, 1956-1963 Remigio Medina Carunking, 1964-1971 Narciso M. Guevara, 1972-1982 Recto M. Cantambuan, 1982 to 1986. 
Elpidio Barzaga Jr., 1986-1987, appointed Mariano Veluz, March to November 1987, appointed Roberto Cantambuan, November to December 1987, appointed Leonardo Javier, January 13 to February 2, 1988, appointed Recto M. Cantambuan, 1988 to 1998, Elpidio Barzaga Jr., 1998 to 2007. Jennifer Austria Barzaga, 2007 to 2009 City Mayors, 2009 present. Jennifer Austria Barzaga, 2009 to 2016. Elpidio Barzaga Jr., present. Barangays. Dismarinas is politically subdivided into 75 barangays or villages. This table shows the barangays, barangay captains, SK chairman and population of each barangay in Dismarinas. Congressional representation The legislative district of Dismarinas is the representation of the city in the House of Representatives of the Philippines. The district corresponds to the 4th Legislative District of Cavite, which was created on October 22, 2009 just right before the ratification of the Charter of the City of Dismarinas on November 25, 2009. Prior to being entitled its own representation, the municipality of Dismarinas was represented in Congress as part of the Lone District of Cavite from 1907 to 1972, and as part of Region 4A in the interim Batasang Pambansa from 1978 to 1984. From 1984 to 1986, it was represented at the Batasang Pambansa as part of the at-large district of Cavite, and was part of the 2nd district of Cavite in the restored House of Representatives from 1987 to 2010. The congressman of the legislative district of Dismarinas is the representative of the city in the lower house of the Philippine Congress. He is elected to serve a three-year term, with a maximum of three terms. Elpidio F. Barzaga Jr. is the incumbent congressman. Provincial Board Representation Despite of its own representation in the Congress, it's still an ordinary component city, meaning its citizens still elect provincial officials. The city has two representatives to the Sangguniang Panlalawigan ng Cavite, English, Provincial Board of Cavite. The board members are elected to serve a three-year term, with a maximum of three terms. Both Rex Mangubat and Rudy Lara were re-elected unopposed in May 2013, which Lara is the most higher votes in the entire provincial board. He is also as the senior board member. City Seal The seal was the winner of the city logo making competition sponsored by the city government. The competition started from February 26, 2010 until March 26 of the same year. Ryan Suarez, an alumnus of University of Santo Tomas College of Fine Arts and Design created the city seal. The winning seal underwent minor revisions and for the celebration of the first cityhood anniversary and the 143rd Feast of the Immaculate Conception, from November 25 to December 8, the new city logo was unveiled on November 26, 2010 in the city quadrangle. The buildings, houses and the gear originate from the old seal which now represents the growing community and workforce. The church symbolizes the historic Immaculate Conception Church in the Poblacion since it was the site of Battle of Perez de Smarinas during the Philippine Revolution against Spain. The sun is from the Philippine flag where each rays represents the provinces including Cavite with significant involvement in the 1896 revolution. The people represents the family and the people of de Smarinas. The two rice stalks and the farmer represents agriculture that reminds us that the city was once a farming community before evolving into an urbanized city. The globe symbolizes the city's global competitiveness while the green leaf represents the city's environmental advocacy. Economy the city of Dismarinas is one of the fastest-growing local government units in the province of Cavite. 
Numerous commercial establishments, which include major shopping malls, fast foods, groceries, convenience stores, restaurants and other service-oriented businesses, are mostly concentrated in the city center and the central business district. Industrial establishments are located in the outskirts of the city. It has the greatest number of universities in the province. From an agricultural-based economy, the town of Dasmariñas has evolved into a highly urbanized, commercialized and industrialized city. It now boasts of three industrial estates, namely, 1st Cavite Industrial Estate FCIE, in Barangay Lancon, Dismariñas Technopark located in Barangay Palaparan I and NHA Industrial Park in Bagong Bayan. Aside from these industrial areas, there are 240 other factories, business establishments scattered in the different barangays that sum up to a total of 309 operational industries in the city. Dismariñas is home to hundreds of thousands of residents who occupy the more than 70 residential subdivisions in the city. It also serves as a haven to investors with its industrial estates and diverse pool of manpower. The rapid growth of the city's population near universities, industrial estates and factories provides a ready market for real estate ventures such as subdivisions, apartments and other support services. Its infrastructure projects involving major road construction and widening support the city in its functional role as one of the residential, commercial, industrial and university centers of Cavite. To protect its environment, Dismariñas has adopted its Luntiang, English, Green, Dismariñas program, which is envisioned to plant 100,000 seedlings planted over the town during the year 2000. In 2012, the city posted 1,137,968,919 Philippine pesos in income, with 37% of it 420,844,216 Philippine pesos sourced locally. Commerce Commerce and trade transactions are intensively undertaken in the identified commercial areas along P. Campos Avenue, Camarino Avenue, Emilio Aguinaldo Highway, University Avenue, the Congressional South Avenue and other areas. Commercial establishments are lined along major thoroughfares. A strip pattern of commercial growth are evident at other places in Dismariñas. Commercial developments along Aguinaldo Highway from Salang to Pala Pala Junction particularly within areas adjacent to the Congressional Avenue shows the nature and extent of commercial activities in Dismariñas. The presence of local commercial centers or shopping centers such as the Highway Plaza, CM Plaza and a branch of a Metro Manila-based shopping center, the Walter Mart which houses different local and nationwide known commercial establishments sets the trend of commercial developments in that part of the city. These are further enhanced by the presence of banks, financial centers and other establishments. There are also commercial establishments supportive of or are offshoots of the educational and medical services being rendered by the De La Salle University Medical Center and the Dr. Jose P. Rizal National Medical Research Center. These makes the area a financial and commercial district of the municipality. The old commercial developments within the Poblacion area, Zone I, IB, 2, 3 and IV provides for the needs of the old town residents and the subdivision migrants on the southern portion of the municipality. The nature of commercial activity being that of a neighborhood commercial center supports the daily needs of the population. The new location of the public market opens the city to the neighboring marketing population of other settlement areas. It likewise makes the public market accessible to all the population both from the resettlement areas and the old town site. Thus, the financial and commercial activity in the Poblacion, the Dismariñas Central Market, the Highway Plaza, the Dismariñas Commercial Complex, SM City Dismariñas, SM Market Mall Dismariñas, Robinson's Place Dismariñas, Terraza Dasma, Walter Mart Dismariñas, Central Mall Dismariñas, the District, Dismariñas enhance the commercial center role of Dismariñas. Industry Dismariñas is an industrial city. The growth has been greatly influenced by its proximity to Metro Manila and the national government's industrial boom. It becomes the choice location for business enterprises being in a crossroad of development south of Manila, industrial developments along the governor. S Drive, Carmona Ternate Road, specifically the first Cavite Industrial Estate, the Reynolds Fills, and different industries dotting the road from Carmona and Salang boundaries to Gen. 
Trias as well as those at the southeastern portion along the Aguinaldo Highway provides employment and livelihood opportunities to the local as well as adjacent municipalities labor force. Since these industries are of national or multinational corporate capitalization and are enjoyed both on local and export marketing. Taxes are being paid by these industries help provide for the basic services and amenities needed by the government as well as the constituents of the municipality. 30 kilometers from Manila is 1st Cavite Industrial Estate, a 283-hectare industrial subdivision located at Lancon provides adequate facilities to light, medium industries. It is a joint project of the National Development Company, Marubini Corporation, and the Japan International Development Organization Limited. Situated in Desmarinas, the estate is complete with power supply, water system, and telecommunication facilities, with 1,500 lines. The estate includes a general industrial zone, which has a customs office and warehouse. Preferred locators are those involved in non pollutive small and medium scale industries. Presently, 48 companies have located their business in this state. The Desmarinas Bagong Bayan, NHA Industrial Estate is all of 8.6 hectares in Desmarinas. The local Waterworks Utilities Administration manages the water system. Its 18 pumps and its 18 elevated storage tanks, having an average capacity of 60,000 gallons each, can very well serve the needs of the occupants. Labor-intensive, export-oriented, non-hazardous, and non-pollutive industries are best situated in the area. GMA NHA Industrial Estate The General Mariano Galvez, NHA Industrial Estate compromises 10 hectares of land in the municipality of Gen. Mariano Alvarez. Types of industries preferred for this estate are those, which are non-pollutive, labor-intensive, export-oriented, and non-hazardous such as the six companies that have located therein. Other industrial estates located in Desmarinas are the Desmarinas Techno Park and City Land Industrial Estate Desmarinas. Real Estate Vista Land launched Vista Alabang in 2014, a township of 1,500 hectares spanning the area where Muntinlupa, Las Piñas, Bacor and Desmarinas meet, with the university town area of the township under the jurisdiction of Desmarinas. There are plans to establish a University of the Philippines campus in the university town area which will focus on technopreneurship. In 2017, an innovation hub named Up Alabang was unveiled. Meanwhile, Ayala Land established Vermosa, a 700-hectare township straddling the cities of Imus and Dismarinas in 2015. The first project named the Courtyards span an area also under the city. Culture Tourism Tourism plays a large part in the city's economy. The presence of Aguinaldo Highway and Governor's Drive makes the city a stopover for those who are traveling to Tagaytay and Batangas from Metro Manila and to Laguna from the towns on the western part of Cavite. The city has a large selection of hotels and resorts catering to tourists. The Katawa Park located on Congressional Road is a large park featuring sculptures and animatronics of animals and dinosaurs attracts tourists from nearby towns and provinces. The Museo de La Salle, located within the campus of the de La Salle University de Smarinas, is a unique, cultural, cross-disciplinary institution serving as a permanent museum of the de La Salle University system. As a resource center for both indoor and outdoor collections, it dedicates itself to the gathering of collectible objects of intrinsic value significant to the preservation of certain aspects of the Philippine Illustrado lifestyle. It envisions itself to be a leading contributor to the Philippine University Museums. Movement. It seeks to form productive partnerships that serve communities in creative ways. It vows to assist the member schools of the system in the core areas of teaching, research, community outreach, and administration. Through active collaboration with other museums in the nation, it promotes the interests of museology and upholds appreciation of the arts and culture. The scenic zigzag Daño Street offers a great view of the city's fields and becomes a tiang or a bazaar during the holiday season. Events Dismarinas City has numerous fiestas and events, from the Barangay religious feasts all the way to a city-wide fiesta. The city itself has six main events which are secular, cultural, and religious in nature. 
Gawad Karangalan Date Varizat is an annual project of the city government of Dasmarinas that recognizes the academic and personal achievements of outstanding Dasmarineño students in the elementary, secondary and tertiary levels. Dasmarinas Day, October 5 It has been a meaningful tradition of the city government of Dasmarinas to sponsor a flower offering to commemorate Dasmarinas Day on October 5. This important activity pays tribute our local heroes who gallantly served the town of Dasmarinas consequently paving the way to our success as a city today. Paraparo Festival, November 26 that is celebrated to commemorate the incorporation of the city of Dasmarinas with people dancing in the busy streets with butterfly costumes. Sports there are 104 covered courts in 75 barangays and 10 public schools in the city. There are also free sports clinics in the city, such as chess, baseball, and taekwondo. The first inter-barangay sports tournament was held in 1999 where only two, two events were played basketball and volleyball. Since then it became a regular feature in the annual program of the local government of Dasmarinas. The City Employees Sports Fest caters to the employees of the city government of Dasmarinas. It started in 2005 and since then, it has become a very much awaited event. Department heads and rank and file employees compete in a friendly competition where talent, skills and perseverance are displayed in a manner comparable to a high-level tournament. Dismarinas Private Schools Athletic Association commonly known as DPSAA started as an experimental project in 2001 to select athletes who will represent private schools in the municipal meet, now city meet. After 10, 10 years in existence, DPSAA has become a breeding ground for athletes who hail from private schools. There is a proposed Dismarinas Arena. However, its location and other information is yet to be announced. Education Several prominent Manila based universities have established campuses in the city, thus bestowing the city the nickname, the University City of Cavite, the De La Salle University Dismarinas, 27 hectares, and its affiliate De La Salle Health Sciences Institute, which has a College of Medicine and other health related colleges, are based in the city. The former offers degrees in the liberal arts, commerce, engineering, and criminology, while latter focuses on medical courses. At the same time, the De La Salle Health Sciences Institute operates and manages a hospital, the DLSU Medical Center, the first ISO International Organization for Standardization certified hospital in the Philippines. Other university and college campuses are the Philippine Christian University, the Technological University of the Philippines, Cavite, National College of Science and Technology, Emilio Aguinaldo College Cavite Campus, St. Paul College Island Park and many others. The number of higher education institutions in the city allows it to serve the tertiary education needs of its population as well as those of the neighboring towns and provinces. Media The city also has its own newspaper, USA Ping Bayan. The official newspaper of Dasmarinas, radio and television channels from Metro Manila are received clearly in the city. DASCA Cable Services provides cable television services to the city. Dismarinas TV Channel 3, where upcoming events, projects, announcements, finished projects, etc. are reached out to the Dismarinas residents, is the city's official television station and is available through subscription to DASCA Cable Services. The only radio station in the city is Green FM on 95.9, operated by the De La Salle University Dismarinas. Transportation Road Network Several roads connect Dismarinas to other cities and towns. A future expressway, the Cavite Laguna Expressway, will pass through the western and southern borders of the city. It will be the first expressway in the city. Aguinaldo Highway N419 and Governor's Drive N65 are major highway corridors passing through the city. Palaparan Road and Salatran Road serves the suburbanized areas to the east. The city maintains other major thoroughfares, like Carlos Trinidad Avenue, Don Placido Campos Avenue, and others that serves other barangays up to the boundaries with other municipalities. The major highways are noted for congestion due to a lack of new roads. Public transport jeepneys can be found around the city, like other cities and town in the Philippines. Jeepney terminals are located in SM City Dismarinas and Robinson's Place Dismarinas, both in the Central Business District. It has fixed routes and you can just hail and ride anywhere in the route. Jeepneys are cheaper than buses and taxis. Tricycles are commonly seen in the busy streets of the city. Tricycle terminals are scattered around the city, such as intersections of small streets.
Taxis are commonly seen in the Central Business District, in SM City de Smarinas and Robinson's Place de Smarinas. Taxis will take you to any part of Luzon Island. Taxis are more expensive than tricycles. There are many bus routes in the city. They will take you to Metro Manila, Batangas, Laguna, and other surrounding provinces, cities and towns. There is a planned extension of the Manila Light Rail Transit System Line 1 or the LRT-1 to NIOG, Bacor. This extension will be a separate rapid transit line to be known as the Manila Light Rail Transit System Line 6 or LRT-6 which will have three stations in the city with its terminus at Governor's Drive. The nearest operating railway station is the Alabang PNR station. It is about 30 minutes away via Dong Hari Boulevard. Air Transport the airport nearest to the city is Ninoy Aquino International Airport IATA, MNL, ICAO, RPLL, about 40 to 60 minutes depending on traffic condition on the Aguinaldo Highway and Cavitex. Another airport close to the city is the Clark International Airport IATA, Creek, ICAO, RPLC, about 2 to 4 hours depending on traffic condition on the EDSA, NLEX and the STEX. Healthcare. There are seven major hospitals in Dismarinas. Asia Medic Family Hospital and Medical Center, Sitio Palapala, Sampaloc I. DBB Municipal Hospital, San Esteban. De La Salle University Medical Center, Congressional Avenue. Emilio Aguinaldo College Medical Center, Cavite, Salatran II. St. Paul Hospital Cavite, Inc. Baral II, Bagong Bayan Dismarinas City Medical Center, Inc. Crossing, Salawag Pagamudan Ng Dismarinas, Baral I establishment of a drug testing center where municipal employees, public school teachers, barangay officials, and policemen are randomly checked free of charge to ensure that they are fit to provide public service. This is also open to the public for 150 pesos. The Dismarinas Lying in Clinic in Barangay Victoria Reyes, established in 2001, offers free childbirth services to indigent mothers. To date, 9,372 mothers have already given birth there. Operation Tuli in all barangays is being held every summer, which had already provided free services to 23,146 residents as of March 15, 2011. Operation of Animal Bite Center has been established where free vaccination against rabies are given to residents bitten by dogs and cats. Established in April 2003, it operates with a budget of PHP 1 million annually and has benefited 16,395 residents. Free anti rabies vaccination for pet dogs, which now total to 25,385. In 2016, Pagamudan ng Dismarinas, English, Dismarinas Hospital, opened, aimed to serve indigent patients of the city. Communications Dismarinas rely upon agencies for their communication needs. These are the Bureau of Posts, the Bureau of Telecommunications, the RCPI, the Philippine Long Distance Telephone Company, PLDT, Digital Telecommunications, DIGITEL, Globe Telecom, ISLACOM, etc. The town has the rightful claim to be tagged as the Internet Hub of Cavite. Due to the presence of numerous Internet Service Providers ISP, in Dismarinas. Computer centers and internet cafes, which provides access to the information superhighway, are lined along the busy avenues of the city. All three major telecommunications companies in the Philippines has 3G and voice coverage in the city, including the rural areas. LTE is to be rolled out in the city soon. See also Dismarinas Bagong Bayan Legislative District of Dismarinas City References 84. Carat http colon slash slash collections dot pvao dot mil dot ph slash gorilla slash gorilla information download slash gua dash External links Official website of the City of Dismarinas, Cavite Official website of the Provincial Government of Cavite 
http colon slash slash collections dot pvao dot mil ph gorilla gorilla information download gua 1034 philippine standard geographic code philippine census information